Hello there, my name is Dr. Carlo Oyer. I'm an emergency physician with 15 years experience and this short patient education video is about sliding scale insulin. And the reason it was prompted today is I've had my two patients out of the four patients I've seen on a Monday morning are because their sugars are elevated. And uh, they're already on blood sugar pills but it's not working, their sugars are out of whack so they present to emergency department because they need to control their blood sugars. So in terms of the emergency medicine assessment of these patients, make sure they're not on uh, DKA, on ketoacidosis, and there's not any medical reasons why their sugars have gone out of whack, i.e. infection, dehydration, um, and, and other causes that could cause the blood sugars to get elevated. Once we've determined the patient's safe and we control the blood sugar to get to a certain spot, usually anything less than 250 is safe to go home with, I don't want the sugars to then start spiking back up and by tonight be 300, 350. So we put the patient on a sliding scale insulin. So even though the patient's already on blood sugar pills, they're already on insulin long acting, I'll put them in addition, supplementally to their already present regimen of sugar control is regular insulin. Now regular insulin is quick acting and it goes away also quickly. Within four to six hours, it stopped working. It got absorbed, it did what it needed to do, and it goes away. And this is why I'll prescribe a sliding scale insulin because regardless of what they're on, it'll give me something to do to bridge the care so that the patient can do uh, his own monitoring of the blood sugar to know how to treat it and bring it down until they can get an appointment filed with the primary care doctor or endocrinologist and get his medications adjustments, his other insulin log acting adjustment, get better education about diet and everything else so the sugars can be more chronically controlled. So this is not a long-term solution to your blood sugar problems, although some people are permanently on a sliding scale insulin. But this is something you can do at home whenever your sugar is high and you've done all your medications like you're supposed to and you just need to control it. So it's regular insulin, not long acting or anything, and you're gonna check your blood sugar. So you take your normal dose of medications or insulins, and uh, about three to four times a day, you're gonna check your sugar. So if you normally take all this in the morning, you wait two or three hours after doing your normal regimen, and then you check your blood sugar. And a sliding scale insulin will look something like this. If your blood sugar is more than, more than this, 200, 250, 300, 350, or more than 400, those are my numbers and how I do it. So usually a person will have, if it's blood sugar more than 200, give an extra two units of insulin. If it's 250, then four. If it's 300, then six. 350, then eight. And more than 400, you can do 10 units of insulin. Obviously, it's 450, you can do 12. But at that point, I'm telling the patient, hey, if it's more than 400, you do 10 units of insulin, you drink lots of fluids, you check your sugar again in two hours, and at that point, if it's lower, then you know what to do, you know what to do next. If it's still more than 400, at that point, my suggestion is you seek medical attention, either urgent care, they might not be able to do much for you, you might have to go to the ER, because usually we give IV fluids, hydration, we check your acetones in blood, we check for acidosis, and we make sure the sugar comes down to where it needs to be. But if it's a single measurement, 400s, whatever, you can do 10 units, you drink fluids, lots of fluids, you wait about two hours, you recheck your blood sugar again. Now, some people, we know insulin doesn't work as well. They have insulin resistance. So when they've done insulins before, it takes a lot more dosages or a lot more insulin to get them. So sometimes I'll have a modified or a higher dose insulin. So if it's 200, I'll do three units. And then 250, I'll do six units and then I'll do nine units, and then I'll do 12 units, so up by threes. There is no exact science to this. Usually my 90% prescriptions are gonna be two, four, six, eight, and 10, but it can be three, five, seven. You know, you can play with that number up and down by a unit until we know what it does to your body uh, before we jump into major adjustments. So if you were in the emergency department with a high blood sugar, there's a good chance you'll go home with a prescription for a sliding scale insulin. So the important thing is, so you know now how to check your sugar three to four times a day, a couple hours after your normal breakfast regimen, whatever. You're gonna, depending on the level of your blood sugar, how many units you're gonna give yourself. And then you're gonna measure the units. You're gonna draw the in an insulin syringe, which is usually marked by one, two, three, four. And usually it's designed so that each point in, in the syringe is one unit of insulin. So it's a tiny little bit of volume. So one is one unit, two is two units, and so on. So you do that, you give yourself a dose, 
you drink lots of fluids and by that I mean water not soda obviously and, and then you're really really good about your diet no carbs or anything like that and you just kind of hydrate and that should bring your blood sugar down obviously if you have nausea and vomit and you can't tolerate meds or fluids if you feel very sick if you feel very weak if the people are complaining you have fruity smell in your uh, breath um, if you're breathing real fast and panting even though you're not exerting yourself those are signs that something's wrong possibly DKA or diabetic ketoacidosis so you should seek medical attention but if you don't have those symptoms you feel clinically well hydrate give yourself the sliding scale insulin like I, I, I explained here and then call your doctor uh, or go to an urgent care Thank you for watching this video. I hope it answers some questions for you. And if you have comments, suggestions, or um, you want me to do a video on some other subject or some other explanation, please let me know. Uh, take care and God bless.